Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, God's good, eh? Yes. All the time. Oh, I praise Him today. God's been so good to me. Well, lost half my preliminaries, brother, brother Nathaniel, or brother Nathan. Are you Nathan or Nathaniel? <laughs> Nathan here. Okay, brother Nathan. Uh, brother Nathan already told about his nephew and everything, but uh, anyway, uh, it is good to be in church with you today. Uh, it is obviously, you know, our first time to be here, and I'm thankful for the opportunity, thankful for the invite. I did, uh, I did plan to come to the to your meeting, and was not able. And I want to throw something in on my behalf, because <laughs> now I have a mic. <laughs> but uh, Brother Nathan said, uh, if, if Bo ain't the show, Bo don't go, but. I did drive all night Friday night to get to go to church last night yeah. where I had no part, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, is, it is good to be here finally. And uh, we, we wanted to come here for some time and I, I'm thankful for the opportunity and appreciate the invitation. And so I always, I, I never counted a lot of thing to be allowed the privilege of uh, filling the sacred desk. It's, a, it's an honor and a privilege, and I am thankful uh, to Brother Nathan for the invitation and God for the opportunity, and I appreciate that. You got your Bible turned to the book of Job, chapter number two. Job, chapter number two, and verse number nine. I feel that the story of Job is very familiar. Uh, to everyone here, I'm sure. So I'm not going to go into all of it. But I want to read verses 9 and 10. The Bible said, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. She said, Dost thou still retain thine integrity, curse God, and die? Pray with me, please. Lord God, I come before you again. I ask you for your anointing. Would you anoint my lips to play and preach the word of God? Would you anoint ears to hear, hearts to receive? Would you speak to hearts today? More than anything else, God, we desire a word from you. God, have your way. Lord, have your way. That we leave here knowing we've heard from you. I don't want it to be that they heard from me. I don't want it to be that they heard from someone else. But God, if we can hear from you today, we give you praise. We give you honor. In the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. 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 You may be seen. Thank you for honoring the word of God. This word that she uses, curse God. May not say it just right because I'm not a fluent Hebrew speaker, but this word Barak, I believe is how you say it. It's supposed to include the ideas of cursing and blessing. It's not clear that it has the connotation curse necessarily uh, in its usage. It is often used to bless. Um, we do translate it that, that way sometimes. And so I'm just, I'm just telling you that I'm not trying to change uh, what it's saying, um, the, the Gemara says to this effect, it said that Job lived in the days of Jacob. He was born when the children of Israel went down into Egypt. He lived about 210 years. Uh, this is tradition. This is Jewish tradition. I want to be clear of that. Uh, but it does give you, uh, it was written in ancient times. And this gives you a, a, a mindset of, of kind of the era that they believed it to be. The impression that they had at least uh, back in those days of when Job lived. And uh, the Septuagint actually introduces this passage uh, in a way, and I'm going to tell you what it said, the translation of what the Septuagint says about that. It said, after much time had elapsed, his wife said unto him, how long wilt thou persevere? saying, Behold, I will wait a little longer, cherishing the trope of my recovery. Behold, the memorial of thee has disappeared from the earth. 
those sons and daughters, the pangs and sorrows of my womb, for whom I tool laboriously in vain. Even thou sittest among loathsome worms, passing the night in the open air, whilst I, a wanderer and a drudge, from place to place, from house to house, watch the sun until it's going down, that I may rest from the toils and sorrows that now oppress me. But now speak some word towards the Lord and die. Now it's easy for us to uh, belittle Job's wife for being of little faith. Yeah. She did not have one book of the Bible to reference. That's right. yeah. She had no past history to read from. Yeah. Job was the first book written that we have today as our common Bible. Yeah. Job had nothing before that. And this woman had less contact with God than he had. Come on. And so if you had lost everything, you might feel a little more like she did. Come on. Now, the name that the Targum says Job's wife had was Dinah. So just be that what it is. Dinah says, just speak something towards, the, towards God and die. Come on. One person said it would be as she said, bless God for his goodness while he's destroying all that you have. Come on. Bless him for his support while he's casting you down. And destroying you. Just bless on and die. Come on. Amen. And uh, the Targum says it like this. Bless the word of the Lord and die. But when I look at what Job says back to her. When I look at what he says. He said thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? Come on. I read Job saying to her. I'm not dead yet. Come on. Yeah. Come on. In essence, I've lost some things. I'm weak. I'm weary. I'm suffering. I'm in a place right now that I don't see any way out of. Come on. I don't know where I'm going to go from here. Yeah. But I'm not dead yet. Come on. I want to preach to you just a simple thought. I'm not dead yet. Amen. I felt like coming and talking to somebody and telling you that no matter what you are going through, no matter how you've gotten to where you're at, no matter how long you've been and what you've lost, if somebody could get the feeling in their heart, wait a minute, I'm not dead yet. Second Corinthians said it like this, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. And it skips down to verse 16 and said, For this cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We may have been through some things. We may be in the middle of some things. We may have had an earthquake and everything around us is shaking. But I'm not ready to call it quits yet. My life is not over yet. I'm still in the land of the living. Amen. My mom is a medic. She uh, got a call a few years ago. And uh, I, I mean, I'll get it just right. So, Mom, forgive me if you're watching. But she said that she got a call, and when they, they got the call, uh, they went to this house, and when they went, they got there, and someone came around from the, from the outside and said, uh, it's back here. And they, so they, they went around back, and they, uh, they got back there, and there was a, a woman that had, her, her sister had gotten worried about her. She couldn't get a hold of her all that long, so... She, she came over to her sister's house and this lady had fallen on the st her back steps and where she fell, her phone was laying kind of beside her, if I, if I remember it correctly. And she was laying there half on and half off the steps. And she was laying there and mom said, she said she had a, she, her, she was cold, she was obviously dead. She had a, a core temperature of 77 degrees. There were ants crawling. I'm not trying to be graphic. I just want you to see what I 
said there were ants crawling in and out of her, her, her eyes, her ears, her mouth. This, this body was just laying there. And said there was, there was a little bit of wind and, and somebody said, I think she's breathing. And, and somebody said, that's probably just the wind blowing her clothes. You know, she's obviously dead. And uh, they were getting ready to transport her somewhere else, but they went ahead and as, as you know, you're supposed to do, they went ahead and hooked up some monitors and stuff, and somebody said, wait a minute, I think I just felt a breath. And they, they went to look at this, went to work at then, and, and they were able to resuscitate her. And she actually lived for several days after that. There was something about it. But I, I thought about that a lot of times. She said, when I looked, it was obvious that she was dead. But she wasn't. Amen. There, there are those that are right here, or there are those that you know, and there are those that you think about when you think about someone who spiritually died, somebody that's gone, somebody that used to be here perhaps, somebody that you used to be close to, someone that a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, maybe a grandchild, that they had an experience with God. And it's easy to look now and say, obviously they're dead now. Obviously they're gone now. There's no hope now. I don't know what we're going to do now. We're just going to have to, if you will, have a spiritual funeral. They're all already gone, but I would that God would give somebody a feeling in their heart, wait a minute, it's not time to give up yet, I still have hope that, oh the Bible said there's hope of a tree, amen, let me see if I, I think I've got that somewhere in my notes here, the Bible says in Job 14, it said, for there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, that the tender branch thereof will not cease. They said, though the root thereof wax hold in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the sin of water, woo, hallelujah, yet through the sin of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. Amen. Oh, that God would let somebody smell some water today. That God would reach out to where somebody's at and say, wait a minute, it's not time to give up hope yet. Bible said in Ezekiel 16 and 6 when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood I said unto thee when thou wast in thy blood live yea I said unto thee when thou wast in thy blood live yes. oh what words oh, God. what power in that one word live yes. I wonder who God is going to speak to today where they're at in their condition and just say live just live oh God hallelujah John Wesley said live this is such a command as it sends forth power to effect that which is commanded he gave life he spake and it was done live you remember God said let there be light and there was no sun there was no moon there was no stars there was nothing to give life and light except for simply the word of God you read Genesis 1 you'll find he said let there be light the first day and it was three days later before there was a sun, moon, and stars. We say the sun gives us light. We say that we get light from the stars or the reflection of the sun off the moon at night. But in reality, we have light because God said, let there be light. And light came before the sun ever started. Amen. I still believe there's power in the word of God that God can say live when there's no life there. And all of a sudden, light comes where there was no light before, what to God he would say this yes. Amen. Amen. Amen I read a story, read an article some time ago, uh, this young lady who was in a car wreck and she was she was uh, she, she was brought to the hospital and the, the doctor there pronounced her dead and he called for her parents, her parents came in and this is the testimony that she gave later, she said I was laying there whenever uh, the doctor said she's dead but I could not move I could hear him but I couldn't move I couldn't say anything I couldn't move a muscle 
And then my parents came in and she said, I heard my dad as he told me goodbye. I heard the weeping and wailing of my mother as she told me goodbye. And I tried so hard to say I'm not dead yet, but I couldn't do it. I want to tell you something. There's somebody out there that they're trying. I'm going to tell you, I remember what it's like to be a sinner and want to be saved, but I just felt like I couldn't do it. Come on. Come on. Amen. She said they took her and they transported her down to the morgue. And as she lay on the table in the morgue, the mortician's assistant walked by and she knew, she said, I knew that if I could do something, it was fixing to all be over. And she said, with everything within me, I struggled and I finally moved my pinky. And when she did, the mortician's assistant saw it. And he said, wait a minute. I think there's still some life here. They put her back on the cart. They took her back upstairs to the same doctor that said she's dead. And that doctor began to work on her again. And God breathed life. And she was able to live two years later. She can give the testimony. But she said, I remember trying with everything that I had to simply say, I'm not dead yet. Oh, hey. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody, if you don't know how to get the words out, if you don't know how to say it with your mouth, if you're not able to get it, if you can move a finger, if you can just breathe a little bit, if all you can do is take one more breath, take another breath, because I'm here to tell somebody, you don't have to die. Hallelujah. Somebody can say, wait a minute, I'm not dead yet. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, he said, live. And I had to breathe. He said, dance. I felt heaven's melody. Yes. Amen. When he said sing, I heard redemption song. Yes. And he gave me faith yes. to carry on when he said live. Yes. Oh, speak to us today, God. Yes. Tell somebody to live. Amen. Oh. Hey, somebody get that feeling. Wait a minute. Have you ever been there? I've been there where I felt like I breathed my last. I felt like I went as far as I could go. I felt like I preached my last message. I felt like I sang my last song. I didn't feel like I could go any further. Hey Amen. I remember, and I've, I've used this a lot of times since, but a few years ago, in the trial of my life, Brother Nathan, we were we were there, my wife and I, we're in such a low place. Hey Amen. And we had prayed, and we had cried, and we had wept. Hey Amen. Didn't know what we were going to do. It didn't, didn't, didn't seem like there was any end to the trial. But I remember one day looking at my wife one morning. The trial wasn't over. It was still far from over. But I remember looking at my wife and I, I made this statement. I said, I choose to believe God. Man, come on, God. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't even feel it. Come on. Sometimes you don't feel like, but if you believe God, there's an end coming after a while. Yeah, yes. Amen. I said it ain't over yet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All my daughters come up here. My oldest two, the twins. Katie and Karai. Um, I asked my wife. She uh, usually tells the testimony everywhere we go of the twins being born. And this is a little bit embarrassing, okay? Uh, but I did ask their permission to embarrass them. Amen. But uh, so when, when we were expecting the twins, when it came time for them to be born, uh, we, were, we were in the trial for a vow. And you say, well, I don't like it being referred to as a trial. If you was there, you would. <laughs> Amen. It was about 72 hours in. And we didn't have any babies. And, and I, I go through the story uh, and it'd take a long time. I won't go into all of it, but uh, we, we had been there for days and we'd been, we'd been in such a place and we had called churches for prayer and we had had prayer all across the country. They were being born at home. And uh, we can get into that all some other time. But uh, but after a while, finally, finally, 
Finally, Kari was born. And when Kari was born, it was wonderful because we had a baby and she was crying and she was she was kicking and squirming and she's been kicking and squirming and crying ever since. No, she hasn't. <laughs> she hasn't. <laughs> but she had a lot of and, and And God gave life and we were so excited about it. And then Katie was born and Katie was born full breach. And when Katie was finally in the midwife's hands, can, can I hold that baby for just a second? I'd love to just take her home. <laughs> if you don't know, I believe in choosing life. I love yes. babies. Yes. yes. <laughs> Do I remember that midwife? That baby used to take it. I'll, I'll fix and give her back. <laughs> but that midwife holding that, that baby and that baby wasn't moving. That baby was lifeless. And she said, pray. Pray. I remember looking at that baby. There was no life there. My wife told us later, I think the reason for the complications in birth was because the baby has to move and help you some, and I, I think she'd been dead for some time. She was lifeless, she was blue. There was no, it was, there was no life whatsoever. Just lay there. Amen. And it could be All this time later. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> We're still home. Lifeless. Can you imagine? But here in a minute. Or two. God read life. <laughs> that baby. Yeah. She had a gasp. Come on. Oh, me. And God bless us. Katie's still here today. Yes. Because just because she looked dead, she went just because science would say she was gone, <laughs> just because it seemed to be over, I'm going to tell you, you be satisfied with one. You can say, God gave me one of my children. God gave me one of my loved ones and somebody saved. But tonight or today, I'm going to tell you something. They're both standing here by the grace of God. Because we were not willing to accept the feet when it looked like death was there. They're still alive today. I just 
just kept going a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want to say that even the youth shall pain and be weary, the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah said, I'm fixing to close. Isaiah said, For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee, they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living shall peace shall praise thee as I do this day. The Father to the children shall make known thy truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to share with you a little point. I'm just about done. He said, When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging, Seems all uphill. When funds are low and debts are high. When you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. Yes. Life is strange with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure comes about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You might succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell just how close you are. It may be near, but it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you might, must not quit. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not dead yet. Yes. The Bible said after this, Job lived. She said, give up. She said, quit. She said, just throw up your hands, bless the word of the Lord, and die. Amen. But after this, Job lived. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, there's an after this for you. There's an after this for you. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not over yet. It's not over. It's not time to quit yet. Just keep fighting. Just keep struggling. Keep battling. Amen. When the devil comes by and whispers in your ear and says, I wonder today if you really Thank you, Jesus. Thank think you. about it. I heard about the man said he was he had went as far as he could go and he was going to backslide. I, I've heard a couple of different variations. I don't know which one's the way it happened, but somebody said his wife told him it's not fair to just quit God. You at least need to thank him for what he has done. He said he went. He got down on his knees one more time. He said, God, I'm fixing a backslide, but before I do, I just want to say thank you for what you have done. And he got to telling God, thank you for this, thank you for that. Let me throw myself in that place. Thank you, God, that you gave me a good wife. Thank you, God, that you gave my children life. Thank you, God, that you've moved in our home. Thank you, God, for all the healings that you've given. God, thank you that you healed my arm when it was broken. Thank you, God, that you healed my fingers and I got to watch you straighten them out. Thank you for that, God. After a while, I started building it up. I want to tell you, the closer you are to death, the faster life shows up. Amen. You understand me? The closer you are to death, there are things that that baby did when she first started breathing that wouldn't have seemed like much if she hadn't have been lifeless before. But somebody today, in your trial, in your heartache, you 
you've wondered, will I make it any farther? Is this as far as I can go? Is this my last step? I want to come over here beside you. Put arm around your shoulders and say, I just want you to know. I don't care what the devil's been whispering in your ear. You're not dead yet. There's still a lot out there. You may not see it. You may not feel it. You may not know it. But if you just take one more breath, you'll live longer. I had an old boar hog one time. He got out of the fence. He's about 800 pounds. He's a big old boar. He jumped the fence. He got out of somebody and poisoned a coyote that was laying over there. He got eaten around. Got into that poison. He got him down. And look like he's dead. But my dad wasn't willing to lose that, that boar. He went over there and he held his head. He got it like an arm. I mean, he got down, he lost probably 200 pounds. He picked that boar's head up and he, he took eggs and he, he just mixed it in with ground up feed and he just held his head up and just poured it down his throat. We ended up selling that boar later because he lived. And I'll tell somebody that's gotten down, you've gotten into some poison, you've gotten hurt. Somebody's gonna live. I said somebody's 